much it cost. But even after all these years, restoration is still possible. Learn how at tedhelp.com. Everybody wants super straight, super white teeth. They want that Hollywood white smile. New Sensodyne Clinical White provides two shades, wetter teeth and 24-7 sensitivity protection. I think it's a great product. It's going to help a lot of patients. Everything's to come. Tomorrow on ET, our Rihanna exclusive in London. Plus, we're with Blake Shelton here at Old Red Las Vegas. It's an ET exclusive. <laughs> you ready? Whenever we get Blake and Cassie together, it is TV gold. Now, before we go, it's no secret that Drew Barrymore and Nicole Richie have a wild past. And now, these two moms are dealing with the fact that their kids know it too. Happening now. It took a jury only about an hour to find Miranda Gossett as guilty. We'll take you inside the courtroom as that verdict is read. This is just one area that San Antonio police have had on their radar for violent crime. They say they're not just watching, but acting. I'll tell you if neighbors believe it's working. More promising rain chances are on the way. Even some drought denting rain possible. I'll let you know when that arrives, how much we could get, and Fiesta Cold Front. The News at 5 starts right now. At first at five, it took a jury longer to hear closing arguments than it did to deliver a verdict for a stepmother accused of starving her stepson. Miranda Casades learning this afternoon that she was found guilty. Eric Hernandez in the courtroom for the gut wrenching testimony as to how four year old Benjamin Savera died and the closing arguments, which left some jurors in tears yet again. We, the jury, find the defendant Miranda Casades guilty. Miranda Casades had no reaction after being found guilty. Casades convicted of starving her stepson, Benjamin Savetta, to death more than three years ago. The trial included witness testimony from Benjamin's brother, who says he witnessed Casades keeping food from his brother. In closing arguments, the defense tried to persuade the jury this wasn't a case of starvation and that the Bear County Medical Examiner got it wrong. He didn't die from starvation. Benjamin Severa most likely had autism. The history is there. Um, he, it's confirmed by April and Brandon that he uh, hits his head. This might have caused or contributed to its death. But the state fired back, saying that Bear County Chief Medical Examiner Dr. Kimberly Molina got it right and was able to rule out all other possible causes of death. They also showed the jury this video again of Benjamin crying and begging for food. Several jurors could be seen crying. The system failed Benji. I don't know, put it any other way. Police failed him on July 20th of 2021 when he was already clearly being starved. CPS failed him. But that's why we have the criminal justice system. That's why we have 12 members of our community is to vindicate his death. In the end, it took the jury just about an hour to find Casares guilty and help bring closure to Benjamin's family. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Police called to a shooting overnight on the southeast side. They found a woman's body and a man nearly dead. SAPD detectives still looking for the shooter. The scene was discovered in the 5600 block of Espada Cliff near Sinclair Road and Loop 410 at around 1.30. They found the body of a woman shot to death in the garage. They also believe that a man in his 30s with a gunshot wound was found in the yard. He was taken to the hospital. Investigators say bullet casings were found in the grass here and they believe the shooter left on foot. However, no further information on that shooter was given to the media. An update now on a shooting near downtown last night. We're told that victim has died. San Antonio police say, according to witnesses, the shooter chasing the victim near Austin Street and Chestnut. They say when the suspect got close enough, he shot the victim multiple times in the chest. Unclear how the suspect and victim knew each other or what led up to that shooting. Police are still searching for that suspect tonight. A new at five, a program to crack down on violent crime throughout the city of San Antonio, getting mixed reviews from neighbors who live in one of those so-called crime hotspots. The program, which just completed its first year, has been praised by Police Chief William McManus and others. But as Katrina Weber shows us, not everyone sold on the success. Strolling through his neighborhood, John Jefferson may have a lot on his mind, but he says crime isn't necessarily one of those things. And you feel safe there now? Yes, I do. Jefferson lives in the 1300 block of Rigsby Avenue, one of more than 100 areas San Antonio police identified as hotspots for violent crime. 
To combat the problem, SAPD put a new strategy into effect last January, designed by researchers at UTSA. Phase one had police making a big push to increase their presence in those areas. You can't argue with those results. Chief William McManus says he likes what he sees so far, violent crime numbers going down. I think it's getting better. Jefferson says he also has noticed a change from how things used to be. There was a whole array of things. Uh, you, you, you had people throwing guns away. You had people drug dealing. To Virginia Rangel and others, though, it's just a different day with the same problems. A daily basis as a policeman there. He's called for some reason, maybe drugs, murder, shooting. Neighbors say these bullet holes are just a visual representation of what they had been seeing in this area, gunfire on a regular basis. So you would say this area is kind of a hot spot? Like, yeah. For crime, especially yes, for <laughs> sure. I would agree with that. She says more still needs to be done. In fact, police plan to keep it going, targeting this area with phase two of the program. Among other things, it will tackle the causes of the crime. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. It has been an agonizing three-day wait for a family waiting to find their 19-year-old who disappeared in Canyon Lake on Sunday. Game wardens with Texas Parks and Wildlife at the lake at sunrise today using sonar to patrol the search area. They're looking for 19-year-old Rono Alejandro Rojas Pierra. He was at the lake with family and friends on a rubber tube when he floated away fell off that tube and began screaming for help. His family tells us he could not swim. This afternoon, state dive teams were set to dive in that area and join in on the search efforts. Pereira went underwater in the scenic Overlook Park area of Canyon Lake that the Army Corps of Engineers says is not authorized for swimming. They look into nasty neighbors, but the city unit that targets the worst of the worst properties in San Antonio. So why did the Dangerous Assessment Response Team, or DART, set its sights on a Northside pet shop? City officials have defended the enforcement action, describing a list of violations to KSAT and claiming the inspection was not a raid. Here's footage from that January 30th incident. But I asked for the courtesy of a heads up so I could be here. If she can't. Sir, we don't give you a courtesy for a heads up on a DART inspection. That's not something that we do. Your name and your badge number, please. I don't have to give that. It could be up at 6 o'clock where this pet shop legal battle currently stands. The case that investigates team looks into it. At new at 5, it seems the Spurs are in fact negotiating with the city about an economic development project involving the Institute of Texan Cultures, the site downtown. That's according to an online article published today by the San Antonio Express News. For months, there's been speculation about the idea of possibly making that specific location the site of a new arena for the Spurs. When we asked about the possibility, both the city and the Spurs have been tight lipped. As a matter of fact, I talked to a Spurs official moments ago who told me no comment. According to the Express News, though, the negotiations were revealed in a letter that Spurs Sports and Entertainment sent to the Attorney General's office. The article states the Spurs are fighting a request to release documents and communications between the city, UTSA, and the Spurs about the Institute of Texan Culture's property. About two weeks ago, we reported that UTSA is planning to relocate the Institute to the Frost Tower for the next five years. When we asked City Manager Eric Walsh about a new downtown Spurs arena, he released a statement saying, quote, the city's interest in an option to purchase the Institute of Texan Cultures, or ITC, stems from the proximity of this property to Hemisphere and the potential development and redevelopment opportunities in the area, end quote. We'll continue to follow this and let you know what develops. It was a unique way of giving during the holidays. It provided success for five local charities. Several Light the World vending machine kiosks were set up around the Pearl around Thanksgiving. Those machines accepted donations and allowed donors to pick a charity and give a specific amount to. Well, today, the final results were revealed with donation checks that were awarded to five local charities. The San Antonio Food Bank, Catholic Charities, Pause for Service, Interface, Wealth Interfaith Rather Welcome Coalition and the Center for Refugee Services. All of them getting checks today from funds that machine collected. This is a demonstration of what how powerful the communities can be. And being in San Antonio has been a great thing because you know we raised more than a hundred thousand dollars in in just a very few uh, weeks. 
The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints sponsors the Light the World's Giving Initiative. Representatives say they're looking forward to working with more charities next time. Here we go. Tomorrow, the wait is over. Fiesta kicking off at the Alamo Dome with Fiesta Fiesta. Yeah, and KSAT will be there to help you party with a purpose. Work crews at the Dome this afternoon setting booths up, equipment, live entertainment, games, the carnival. Lots of food will be set up at the HEB Plaza. That's just north of the Dome. And one of the best parts, admission is free. Plus, KSAT will be broadcasting live from Fiesta Fiesta. So we'd love it if you come out and say hi. Fiesta 2024, by the way, runs from April 18th tomorrow through the 28th. KSAT is your Fiesta station. We're hosting two special watch parties exclusively for KSAT insiders. Just scan the QR code you see right there to get your tickets right now. We got the Battle of Flowers party or the Fiesta Flambeau or both parties. But first, you have to sign up to be an insider. It's quick, it's easy, and it's free. And for everything and every anything Fiesta, scan the QR code. We're going to take you instantly to the KSAP Fiesta page. It has your Fiesta guide plus Fiesta extras. And you can post your Fiesta pictures here, too. But first, we've got a medal giveaway today taking place at Crockett Park, where Metro Health has set up some sort of a, uh, a fair out there. And what a better place to give out some of these great Weather Authority medals. Mia, Sarah. Hey guys, we're so excited. Yes, we're at Crockett Park and we're going to be here until 7. We're handing out Fiesta medals. Show off our Fiesta medals. Here we go. This year's 2024 KSAT Weather Authority medal. We do have some wristbands left, but they are going quick. We are having a great time here. Check out our beautiful line. Hello, everyone. We've had people here all afternoon. They are so excited to get their medal. And all I gotta say is Viva Fiesta! <laughs> it's not Fiesta without confetti. And here we have Dr. Kurian with Metro Health. Can you tell us a little bit about this event that's going on today? This is our way of ringing in the Fiesta in a safe and healthy manner. So we have many of our services showcasing here, but primarily we are highlighting our STI control and prevention program where we are offering free STI testing services. So come on down, get tested, ring in Fiesta in a safe and healthy manner. That's awesome, that's free. Any other services you're offering today? Yeah, our immunization team is here as well. So if you need vaccines, come on down, it's free. You don't need an appointment, come on down and get um, stay, um, get up to date with your vaccines as well. Wonderful, thank you so much for offering this service here. And again, we're gonna be out here till seven. Come down, get a few wristbands. There's only a few medals to be given out left, but we want to see you. We want to take pictures. We want to do raffles. Come out to Crockett Park. We've got plenty of vendors here, too. They've got music, all of the things. So, yes, we will definitely give you all another update coming up on the news at 6. See you then. Always having a good time this time of year. Getting ahead of it. Fiesta Fiesta's tomorrow, and we've already been having the fun. Now, today... A unique day. We only rose 10 degrees, but with this high humidity, our morning temperature was 72. That's well above the average low of 59. Then we made it up to 82. The clouds that we've had in place really mitigating how warm it gets out there where we've had some breaks. It's a bit warmer as usual. 91 Eagle Pass, 87 Kerrville and Daniels backyard, 84 in Floresville, 85 in Windcrest. Meanwhile, 80 in Bulverde and 81 in Bernie. Extremely sticky and muggy outside. You get the Cascarone on your head and you, you know, the sweat just holds it all right there. And that's going to be the case tomorrow, too, during Fiesta. You know what I'm talking about during Fiesta Fiesta? You're just covered in it all over the place with the stickiness. Southeast wind 5 to 15 this evening. It's going to be sticky and humid. An isolated shower possible, 20% chance. That's mainly closer to the Rio Grande. Promising rain chances in the days ahead. We're going to talk about that and how much we could get and wear in just a bit. So what you're basically saying is get ready for a confetti bath tomorrow. You're going to need That's your air compressor what when you get home. What you're yes. saying. Okay, all right, let's go outside right now. 281 at Loop 410. Actually, the ramp doesn't look too bad that goes from 281 to 410, but 410 definitely backed up in the westbound lanes there. Straight ahead, just like everyone else in your family, your furry members may need health insurance too. Veterinary medical bills can be overwhelming for pet owners without coverage what it can cover, where you can get it, and what is the best coverage plan for your pet next. 
I'm Myra Arthur here in the KSAT newsroom, and here's what's coming up on the news at 6 o'clock today. They got a record-breaking budget increase using your tax dollars. Now Animal Care Services is sharing how that money is being put to use, how close the department says it is to reaching its goals after not being able to respond to more than half of calls for dangerous dogs last year. Plus, is there room for horse-drawn carriages on San Antonio streets? The city's considering banning these, but local operators say the city council needs to hold its horses. We'll share that debate. That's today on the News at 6. Thank you, Myra. They are members of the family, and those vet bills for Fido and Fifi can add up. So what about pet insurance? Does it actually save you money on checkups and emergencies? 12 Inches Times Marilyn Moore says before you buy it, there are some other ways to consider saving on your medical care for your pet. Paulina Vargas has had pet insurance before, but now with Nigel and Bella, she decided to skip it. It makes more sense for us to really not to be paying monthly fees right at the pay insurance and uh, we decided to really was the best option for us just to pay it, uh, you know, out of pocket. She's not the only one. A consumer report survey found pet owners are pretty unhappy with pet insurance coverage. Over 2000 members shared their experience with pet insurance covering everything from what's actually covered to the premiums they paid and the claims process for getting reimbursed. And overall, there was no real top dog. In fact, most of the results found that the insurance companies were all pretty middle of the pack. The survey revealed pet parents were paying an average $47 a month per pet. Six providers got a mid-range satisfaction score and two got unfavorable ratings. As an alternative, Brian Vine suggests putting what you would spend on the insurance premium into a dedicated savings account. Self-insured by putting away money every month into a direct deposit high yield savings account that you can draw from should your fur baby need some medical assistance. If your pet needs medicine, shop around. It can be cheaper to order online from places like Chewy, Petco, Pet Meds, and Walmart's Pet Pharmacy. Just like you can see the doctor over telehealth for certain conditions, your pet can also see the virtual vet. Two popular sites to do that are POP and Bond Vet. Of course, it's for non-emergencies. We are being very lucky. They are very healthy and uh, they're happy. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. I didn't know there was a thing called virtual vets. Well, now you do. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Learn something every day. All right, 82 degrees out there and that cloud cover has hung in today. Yeah, yeah it and really did locally, especially, and that kept our high temperature in the lower 80s. There were pockets of clearing off to the west where we did make it up closer to 90 degrees, but going forward, we have promising rain chances. This is what we would like to see a weekend cold front that moves through essentially Saturday night and then cooler, less humid for Sunday and even Monday. This is in the heart of Fiesta and we're getting a noticeable cold front. Let's start with the rain chances. Next couple of days, 20% chance Thursday evening, Thursday night. Friday afternoon, Friday evening, 20%, a few stray pop-up storms. Saturday, we're up to 60% later in the day and up to 70%. So good coverage widespread Saturday night and in the pre-dawn hours on Sunday. Right now, a little bit of activity coming off the mountains of Mexico. This is likely going to make it to and just over the Rio Grande, but not make it a whole lot farther into the hill country. We'll see some of these storms work their way into parts of the hill country, but we're not expecting anything in or near San Antonio. Here's the big picture, and you see the plume of clouds overhead. This is that notorious southwesterly flow aloft that we talk about. It's a conveyor belt of Pacific moisture that gives us those layered clouds in the sky. And with this low level humidity in place and that wind off the Gulf of Mexico, we also have the very low gloomy gray clouds. So whichever way you cut it, there's a decent amount of cloud cover overhead at any given time. Notice the high over the Gulf clockwise flow and then the low that disturbance off to our west that disturbance will eventually swing through, give us a little burst of energy. But notice our future cast. We're going to start the day cloudy again tomorrow. Fog, drizzle, a little bit of mist, a little bit of dampness. By the afternoon, we clear out into some sunshine. By Thursday evening, 
Rain chances are a little bit better in the hill country and Edwards Plateau than they are in San Antonio. I think we'll have a little too much of a cap sealing our atmosphere from triggering those storms, but the better chances will be coming, as I showed you, Saturday and Saturday night. And you look at the overall rainfall potential, we could have a sweet spot in the hill country of two inches of rain or more over that time frame. That's exactly what we need. So cross our fingers that that continues to be the trend and verifies. But right now it's looking fairly promising. It is sticky outside. Dew points, low 70s. We're feeling the mugginess. The cold front's going to change that. Sweep away the humidity for Sunday and Monday. You won't even notice the mugginess out there. Tomorrow, 71 with that fog, drizzle, dampness in the morning, partly cloudy in the afternoon, making it up to 88 for the high temperature. Some locations even just at 90 degrees. But notice how our temperatures fall off quite a bit behind that cold front. Sunday, 68 for the high temperature. Hard to believe it's fiesta weather. Oh, yeah, that's going to be comfy. Sports coming up next. This takes a minute to get used to playing with somebody who's 7'5 and can do everything. Um, you know, where his spots are on the court, where to find him. Devin Vassell and the Spurs had to learn how to play with Wimby, which improved as the season went on in big board sports. Before the Spurs regular season finale Sunday afternoon against Detroit, a handful of guys held their season ending pressers. Devin Vassell, Jeremy Sohan, Kelton Johnson and Wimby all met with the media before the Spurs dropped the hammer on the Pistons. Now Devin talked for about nine minutes and he had a lot of good things to say about Wimby. What did he improve the most? Um, I feel like it's a it's a demeanor thing for him. I feel like he really has like it might sound cliche, but like he has like that dog in him. Like he was upset about the refs last game, and he comes back and he hits those threes, and he's just he's just fired up. Like you know, Giannis tried to dunk on him, and there was no, it wasn't happening. Like he's just, I think he's like, I'm here, I've arrived, and there's not nothing anybody can do about it. And that's that's the mindset that he has to have. I mean, he's gotten better offensively, defensively throughout the year, but I think it's the mindset that he has now that there's nobody on the court that can mess with me, and that's that's what we need. Vassell says his foot is getting better and that his goal is to play in all 82 regular season games next season. The Pelicans and Lakers tipped off the Western Conference play-in tournament last night. Zion had 40 points and 11 rebounds for the Pels, but he left the game late in the fourth quarter with a hamstring injury. Now the Lakers stepped up down the stretch to beat the Pelicans 110 to 106 to earn the seventh seed in the West. When we're healthy or how healthy we can get is going to determine how well we play. Um, this is about as close as healthy as we've been, but tonight we showcase what we're able to do both offensively and defensively. We've got a good group going right now, good rotation, good plan, and guys are coming in ready to go. Braun and the Lakers will face two seed Denver in the first round of the playoffs. And the Kings got to light the beam last night in Sacramento because they handled the Golden State Warriors in the second Western Conference playing game. And the Kings pretty much dominated this one, knocking off the dubs 118 to 94. Obviously, this team beat us last year in the playoffs, and I mean, it feels good to win this game. But uh, we know we have to we have to go on the road and win another one for us to, I mean, accomplish the first step in our goal. Kings will play at the Pelicans Friday night. The winner will earn the eighth seed and open with OKC. And Zion is out with a bad hammy. We'll be right back after the break. Thanks for watching the News at Five. World News up next. We'll see you back here at six.